Hey, this is Darren Waller, tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Walleris, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Goo goo ka Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Not football time. Yeah, <laughs> I could see the sad look on your face when you, I mean, you knew it already, uh, but then the moment came and you couldn't say it and it'll be okay, Mike. We'll have football this weekend. That's true. <laughs> Thursday, October 15th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Excited for today's episode, despite it not quite being football time yet. Not yet. Uh, we have news to talk about. We have uh, important news that could be coming our way. We have the forecast today. We're getting into, getting into the matchups. Starts of the week. Starts of the week. Majestic poetry to end the show with the boom boom kicker. Incredible rhymes. <laughs> what are you doing? Taking what? it to 100. <laughs> He's doing his uh, announcer voice because, you know, Jason does all yes. the drops. That is true. A lot of people ask. They always <laughs> write in and say, who does your voice for all of your drops? Yeah. Jason does it. Then I go into the audio software. Right. Throw about five thousand filters and processors. But show and them that base. Show them the base Hit again. Him. Number two. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how it starts. That's, That's how it starts. And then you doctor number up. two. See, and then it, 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 it ends like that. Yeah, all but, me. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> appreciate you supporting the show. The reviews, they're very kind on Apple Podcast, and uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jointhefoot.com, that's where you get the bonus episode, that's where you get the premium perks, the tools, the resources, that's where you can support the show. Jason, do you want to do this drop for us? <clears throat> yeah, I'm ready. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head & Shoulders, available at Walmart. <clears throat> Way to drop it down. Incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you dropped it down a little bit to... Like when I, I when feel I like listen, I took it to one hundred. When I listen to your voice, I think there's a zero percent chance that you could actually do that. Right, but that's what's so impressive. Welcome into taking it up to one hundred for this fine week. Uh, week five results: uh, two for three. Lavisca Chenault, mm. Darius Slayton, Eric yep. Ebron. Oh, Ebron, you Ebron let us down, but uh, the other two were hits. Uh, we always pick a player to take it up to one hundred. Basically, from a, a group of players that either had a down week or are ranked outside the top 24 that we think will have a 100 week. You wouldn't expect it. Yeah, you're not You're not looking. Yeah, and sometimes we go well well past the top 24. Sure. We're looking for a diamond in the rough, mm -hmm. uh, trying to find our Aladdin oh, here. <laughs> oh, man. That was, the rough. That okay, was that was funny. very nice. Um, Mike does all of now our... They know I, do, does. I do all the Aladdin movies. <laughs> okay. Uh, my, I'll, I'll kick it off here with my taking it to 100 player. Oh my. It's McCall Hardman. Oh, I love it. I mean, whenever you've got a one touch man like this, that just needs one opportunity to have a great game. And then you have the starter ahead of him. Look, Sammy Watkins is yeah. out. The snaps will go up. The opportunity will go up. I love the matchup with Buffalo, who I think is going to be able to keep pace with the Kansas city chiefs. I mean, the the opportunity is there for him, and I think he will take it to 100 this week. This is a week you could start McCall Hardman, and, uh, you know, obviously his range of outcomes, and the reason why he's, un, you know, usually not a startable asset mm -hmm. is because his... One touch and zero touch, those are very close together. Those are together. very close. <laughs> the, the chance of him going out and goosing is uh, greater than zero, but I do think the talent and opportunity will win out this week. McCall Hardman takes it to 100. All right, Mike will be happy with this. I'm going to go with Antonio mm. Gibson. Oh, guess what? I love it. <laughs> All right, yes. He was super disappointing last week. He gets to take on the Giants this week. I think they right the ship with the involvement of Antonio Gibson with Kyle Allen being out there for the whole game. It started great last week with Kyle Allen. He went down to injury. Things got discombobulated, and when things get discombobulated, apparently that means J.D. McKissick comes on the field. Apparently. So I think Antonio Gibson... 
gets at it, takes it to 100. And I'm I'm going a little bit different this week. I'm actually piggybacking here with with Andy. We're we're double teaming against the Giants because I am taking the Washington D S T. Right. I'm taking a whole group of fellers yeah. to take it up to 100. They're taking on New York. Look, we know that that the front line of Washington is serious business, and they're taking on the Giants. Danny Fums. Uh, Fumbliana Jones, whatever yes. you want to call him, they have given up the Giants. They've given up a top eight week every single week, at least a top eight finish to the the, D, the DST they are against, and that includes a top five performance three times already. Daniel Jones, turnover machine. I expect Washington to have a fine day, and they might just be hanging out on your waiver wire still. Yeah, it's because it's scary to sign the Washington DST and play them against Daniel Jones, and yet it shouldn't be. He is a fumble right. master. Also, you could pick up and play the New York Giants yeah. DST. <laughs> you really can. All right, take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how our up to 100 picks fared. News and notes from around the league. A diamond. <laughs> <laughs> The, the the funniest part about that voice is look, Aladdin happens in the right household very frequently. It's like my son's favorite movie is the, the remake. And as soon as I hear it, I, I can't stop doing the voice. But that <laughs> voice, like saying regular things like, I'm thirsty. <laughs> like it's, it's painful. It, I can't. Well, it's painful, number one, but I can't stop doing it yeah. around the house. Well, I, based on the quality of the impersonation, I think your household's better for it. I need. To use the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, let's get into the news here before we we talk matchups. Starts of the week. Woke up with some more COVID news this morning that seems to be trending a better direction than when it began. Uh, <laughs> that was a wild ride. Yeah, it it seems we're learning, right? We're learning how these rides go, and they don't always end in disaster. Uh, there was an early report that there were four tests that were positive. Then it became one confirmed positive test of a non-player. Now, the latest report we have is that they are able, this is the Falcons, by the way, they're able to return to the facility on Friday. Is that right? Yeah, they, they were given permission to return this afternoon, uh, actually on Thursday, and they chose to um, not. They are staying home for one extra precautionary day. And so they should be back at the facility tomorrow. As of this moment, the game has not been rescheduled. But, of course, if more positive tests pop up, then uh, we'll, we'll uh, change as it changes. All right. And then uh, good news here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cam Newton activated off the reserve COVID list, seen dancing at practice. Everything's fine. Activate. Activate Cam. Uh, Devontae Adams on track to play in week six versus the Buccaneers. Uh, you want to play him. Keenan Allen dealing with back spasms on Monday night will be fine, according to Anthony Lynn. He has the bye week, which, uh, you know, he can take it easy. Mm -hmm. Drew Locke practicing in full against uh, set to play the Patriots. Yeah, so Drew Locke and Cam Newton will be back. I would rather play Cam Newton. I agree. <laughs> Sam Darnold ruled out for week six. Joe Flacco, Frank Gore. Can the offense get any more hyperdrive? <laughs> no? No? Warp speed. <laughs> I it it neither should be playing in the starting lineup in the NFL. Yes, Lev Bell. We don't know where he's going. We know he's going someplace. Likely to sign today. Maybe by the time you hear this, it, it yes, it it's going to happen today. And the best part of this, I I don't know if this is just a PR stunt or whatever. But the 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 the. the the whispers from the bushes, the finalists for Le'Veon Bell's services, the Dolphins, the Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Jets' upcoming schedule, the Dolphins, <laughs> the Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, the team that has the most smoke to the name uh, that could turn into a signing yeah. – and the one that has the biggest fantasy implications, which is why I'm going to bring it up, I am going to speculate about this one, sure. is the Kansas City Chiefs. You're probably not leaning on Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. You're probably not leaning on Miles Gaskin. You might be leaning on Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Right. And uh, 
if you add Le'Veon Bell to the Chiefs, which seems like the most likely situation right now, what are the implications for Clyde? Does he go? Is it possible he goes to a place where you can't start him? I I don't think that will happen. The ceiling it gets dropped down immediately. Uh, there, a lot is being made recently on Twitter talking about the inefficiencies of Clyde Edwards-Alaire near the goal line. Granted, almost all of those attempts that people are quoting, that was back in week one. We haven't really seen much opportunity since then. And uh, week one was bad, man. <laughs> like he had Clyde had a lot of opportunities, but they kept trying to run him up the middle, and, and he got stuffed every single time. So Lev Bell probably gets involved there. Uh, I mean, the the a question does have to be asked because this was we all freaked out uh, last year when Damian Williams was the guy he was going to be the starter. Then they bring in Lashawn McCoy. Yeah, Lashawn McCoy turned out to be washed. And I'm not saying Le'Veon Bell is, but we have, when's the last time you watched Le'Veon Bell make a play and you're like. Oh yeah, that's that's vintage old school Le'Veon Bell. Back when he was on the Steelers. Yeah, when he was old school Le'Veon Bell. So I mean that that's the last time. I do think that which he is has, by the way two two seasons yeah. ago or three yeah. actually. Yeah, he he has enough left in the tank though. From you know when, when I'm watching, and he gets a, a, a space to run. He doesn't look washed to me. It's just he rarely gets that. Um, this would just be one of those situations where look the Kansas City. Chiefs offense, we know for a fact, can support two running backs that are fantasy relevant. Sure. But if they are splitting, neither one is a star. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so we'll see where he goes. I don't know if I was expecting the Chiefs. I know we talked about it yesterday. I didn't think there were many destinations where you'd want to potentially start him. At least with Kansas City, you might. If if I'm Lev and there are actual offers from those three teams, how do you not – how are you even thinking about this? Well, yeah, the Bills are yeah, very gonna, attractive too. Yeah, I was going to say the Bills would be very interesting to me. Yeah. All right, uh, let's get into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. All right, the Houston Texans at 1-4 taking on the Tennessee Titans, who are 4-0. Titans are 3.5-point favorites. It's a 53-point over-under, which is nice. And, uh, the I mean, Titans 4-0. Three, what is it? Four straight years they finished nine and seven. So they, is it? Yeah. Wow. So they're they're off to a nice start. Didn't need to practice unnecessary to defeat the Bills by multiple scores, mm -hmm. but they are very efficient. We highlighted just how good Ryan Tannehill has been as the starting quarterback for the Titans. Third in place per game. Fourth in pace. Um, they're getting it done, and Tannehill has has been pretty good. He was the quarterback 16, 8, 24, and 2, uh, second. <laughs> and uh, what are your impressions of this game? A.J. Brown, you're going to start him. Derrick Henry, you're going to start him. Johnny Smith? You're going to start him. The number one tight end in fantasy football yeah. right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you start uh, all four of the relevant pieces for the Titans. This is an overall game that I love. I, I think what we saw last week from the Texans was a little bit of getting it together. You know, the, the, the Bob was out. And so all of a sudden this team had a little pep in their step. Brandon cooks started getting involved. Will Fuller was still good. And I think that the Houston Texans will be able to at least hold up for a while where this should be a back and forth game. And if that's the case, this is one of those games I want a lot of pieces in. I'm actually okay taking that crazy chance in my flex on a Brandon Cooks. Okay. Will Fuller probably should be in your lineup. Um it is interesting to note the Tennessee Titans um they have given up a lot of points to the wide receiver too. They the, they are very very beatable and that's that's done um shout out to Mike Beers does great work. That's based on DraftKings pricing of wide receivers. So essentially, it's not like the slot wide receiver. It's the second best fantasy relevant player for your team, according to what the expectations is, you know, what ADP would be basically. Um, and then that second wide receiver has been torching the Titans. So who is that in this game? I was going to say, that's perfect for Houston because they, they only have twos. Yeah, Ooh. I mean. Will it, Fuller, Brandon Cooks, Randall Cobb, they're all – the second option. That's rough. I, I wanted to highlight real quick just how good Will Fuller has 
actually been because week one, wide receiver 17, but then you have the what you did at the beginning of the year, it hurts. Week two, gets hurt. Does the, if he leaves the game, he has an actual full goose egg. But then after that, wide receiver 28, wide receiver 8, wide receiver 23. Will Fuller has been steady for your team. Will Fuller is an absolute must start. Yes. And uh, I have him in different leagues. Same. I have no qualms about putting him in there. He's the wide receiver 17 on the year, w including a game where he ended up getting knocked out and goosing. And I think he might still be undervalued. The, the, similar to what I was saying about Chris Carson before last weekend, I, I know that the ranking is there, but just the sentiment for Will Fuller may not – be caught up to what he is actually doing on for fantasy and on the football field. You may be able to go trade for him still. Well, you like the opportunity for uh, this game to get to that over under number to have it be a high scoring affair. Jason said he likes the game a whole lot. Darren Fells, who is the I don't know the status of Jordan Akins. Is he still out? He this has week? a high ankle sprain, so I can't imagine he's going to play. So Darren Fells is very sneaky once again. Yeah. yeah well, uh, we we might talk oh, about him. Oh, very nice. What is your guys' confidence level here for for David Johnson? He's been fine for fantasy purposes. Uh, volume play. He's he's volume, but now you have the the whispers from Houston that they're going to get Duke Johnson more involved. You look back at, at uh, what the Titans have been able to do. Yeah, they, you know, in that season long, they it looks like they're a, a matchup you want to attack, but they were strong against Denver running backs. They were strong against the Buffalo running backs this past week. Where are you expecting low end running back one? Is he a uh, is he a volume low end he, running back two? Where he, are you? He's a middling running back two, and that's where he's okay. going to be the entire season. If you look at what he's done so far this year, he's pretty much all but one game. He's been a top twenty five running back. But top 25 running back isn't, like, great. You know, the last three weeks, 24, 23, 25, those are his ranks. Right. So he's, you know, he's he's got enough volume. He's like a very uh, David Montgomery-type player where the the workload will be there, but he just doesn't really have the juice. Who would you rather old. have? That's, yeah, that, that's those a, two. That's a great question. If David Montgomery or David Johnson, one should be a much better offense now with – with, with uh, Deshaun Watson. Man, that is a really tough question. I th I lean David Johnson just because we've seen more flashes from him. Um, Do you mean rest of season? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say no, this, no, this, this week, week in particular, David. it's David Montgomery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All without in on a, David Montgomery this week. Without a shred yes. of doubt. Yeah, that's a tough one. I think they're very, very similar. They both – they really, really try hard, both of them, to finish as the RB24 on the week. That's yeah. their objective and goal. And it's done by volume and not being very spicy. No big plays. Um, Brandon Cooks, though, to Jason's point, last week, 8 for 161 and 1. If he is that number two option, there's always the possibility that it's a Brandon Cooks type of week. Or like last week, both were startable. I mean, Deshaun Watson, with the amount of targets that Hopkins was getting in this offense, if he just, just breaks it up between a couple of guys, it's high value. I mean, mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson's a great quarterback yeah I guess we should mention him for fantasy as well you're definitely starting him I mean the, the weapons here that are starting to click uh, Fells and Randall Cobb are still fine options for him everything goes to Deshaun Watson I, I would certainly start him this week all right the Cincinnati Bengals one three and one taking on the Indianapolis Colts at three and two the Colts eight point favorites 46 and a half point over under they're my favorites uh, on the week in terms of being really boring and kicking a lot of field goals and probably oh, yeah. winning this game. <laughs> I, I was really tempted to to go almost upset here with the Bengals, but I just think Joe Burrow is going to struggle again in this game against this Colts defense. Uh, they are stout. They have been great this year. They're still number one against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. Number one against opposing fantasy tight ends. Number three against running backs. Eighth against wide receivers. They're a great defense. It's going to be a problem for Joe Burrow once again. I imagine A.J. Green's going to miss this game. Not that you would play him. Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins. I'm not excited about it in this Colts matchup. Mm -hmm. To be honest, you're looking at Joe Mixon. And then I'm, I'm not really trying to start another Bengal. Completely agree. Completely agree. In a, in a PPR, if you want to start a Tyler Boyd, would you play uh, McCole Hardman in a PPR or Tyler Boyd? It, that would be – so, obviously, Tyler Boyd would be the higher floor. 
um, this would be a matchup thing where I'm looking at my opponent. He's 4-0. He's putting up 150 points every week. I need a big performance, and, and that's where I might go to McCall Hardman, who could end up with a much bigger I, – I just don't see a breakout type of game coming from Boyd. Mike, break down the Colts side of the ball in this one. Uh, All right. Are we going to get the Jonathan Taylor game we've dreamed of at this point? Uh, not this week. I mean, it, Jonathan Taylor is very difficult, mostly because of Jordan Wilkins. They this is a this is a three running back timeshare, which is not at all what anyone expected, hoped, or dreamed of for for Jonathan Taylor. I mean, were they? I, I guess it, it. If you know, if we if we think back to the process, right? Draft season. When it was Marlon Mack, they talked about, okay, it's going to be Marlon Mack, it's going to be Jonathan Taylor, and then we knew Naeem Hines would be worked in. That's a three-player three, that's a three player timeshare at the running back position, so maybe that is simply what Frank Reich desires. We've speculated perhaps Jonathan Taylor is being saved for when, when the weather turns, you know, when things get real spicy down the line and you really can just rely on Jonathan Taylor. But maybe it's maybe Frank Reich, despite the second round draft capital, just wants to use uh, three running backs. I, I think it's a matter of necessity. Do they need him? Do they need Jonathan? Jonathan Taylor is clearly their best running back as far as a, uh, you know, you just hand the ball off and see who gets the most yards. It's clearly Jonathan Taylor. Right. Wilkins stinks. But do they need Jonathan Taylor to beat the Bengals? No. Next week, do they need Jonathan Taylor? to beat the Lions. No. It'll be after that when you start seeing, you know, Tennessee, uh, Green Bay, Tennessee again, Ball, the, the Ravens. I think we're about two weeks away from Jonathan Taylor's big stretch of games where he will be very valuable. I, I think the more difficult the matchup, actually, as far as NFL winning the game, not fantasy points against running back, will be better for usage. Yeah, I mean, I... I guess Wilkins was not really used last week, but still, Jonathan Taylor was only on the field for percent of the snaps. Now, I mean, he came through RB seventeen. He got the touchdown, but these opportunities the last three weeks after the week two explosion of opportunities, he's averaging sixteen a week or so, which is it's not what you told for. It's you play him every week. He's the, but, he's the running back fourteen on the season, right? Uh, with opportunity, I, I think the Cincinnati Detroit games are very interesting from the perspective of softer, uh, defenses and situations where, um, I think, you know, the jets game, that one was obvious. They were up 36. They won that one 36 to seven. Um, you know, last week they lost, they lost the game and he still was limited in opportunities. I, I, you know, obviously with easier matchups there's going to be touchdowns that come easier like he had with the Jets um he's just so consistent it's a matter of what what is going to what's it going to take for him to be great in a game because right now he's good every single game you, do, you don't two have touchdowns any... I mean it'll be that two touchdown game it'll be that sure. matchup where he's got a couple goal line opportunities probably we haven't seen the big play but he's still averaging you know last week 4.8 a, a, a an attempt so you're right about him being the best guy. I think what threw everybody off was the Minnesota game. He had 20 carries in the first half. He had 28 opportunities in the game. Right. And then the first week having six targets, six catches, and the, the targets haven't been there. And to yep. be honest, Phillip Rivers hasn't done the Phillip Rivers thing since then because we expected between Hines and Jonathan Taylor in week one, it was like, okay, John, Phillip Rivers is the same guy, the Eckler guy. Well, the last three weeks, it's not like you can count on either of those players in the passing game. Yeah, Hines has been completely like. Do you drop Naeem Hines now? I'm I'm very open to it. Man, I, that I was have him. such an investment in Fab in Week One, and you probably do have to move on. Yeah, you do. Uh, what do you make of T. Y. Hilton? If anything, ten. He finally saw double digit targets. Uh, a wide receiver, thirty five. So a flex play, but but the snaps. He finally jumped up to a 95% snap share player. Uh, we we did retire him. Yeah, it, look. Are, are we, is he still retired? It's it's like if you're going to have cereal in the morning and you don't remember if you still have milk and then you see that the milk's like a day or two old, you'd still rather have the cereal with milk. Right. But you're like, this is not how it's supposed to be. I don't want to start my day with uh, with uh, uh, 
the what? risk that me thinking about my stomach yeah. all day. Yeah, and so it's like if it's a day if it's a day past, you're like, I'm probably still gonna I'm gonna have the cereal with the milk, but you're not excited about it. <laughs> you're not excited, uh, and that's yeah. Hilton. I put him in my lineup because I have to. I think it's different for everybody. That cereal would go back in the box for me. I don't drink expired milk ever. If it's one day gone, that milk is in the garbage. <laughs> You don't do. Um, the, do you do the smell test though? Like the no, smell test on the no. smell test on Hilton last week. It didn't smell that bad. It's a little so, bit off. So here's a, here's the difference though. I mean, we were just talking about the game script. If they're up, if they're down, yada yada. They lost last week. They, they you know they, they they lost to a team that was obviously winning. Um, and that's where the that's ten, how it happens. Exactly. Genius. That's where the ten targets comes from. It, in this game against Cincinnati, they're not going to need to be throwing nearly as much as they did last week. So I'm I'm O U T on Can we on put Hilton. it this way then? If you have to start a Colts wide receiver, it's still Hilton. It is Hilton, yes. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I uh I'm willing. <sighs> One day I Mike, are you are you somebody that's willing to take the shot on the milk? Do you do the smell test with if it's a day past? Here's here's where I am. I mean what can even happen to you if you have milk isn't that how they make yogurt you and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, but there's other th things involved in the process. I mean, yeah, you drink, I don't, I mean, you I drink don't wanna... bad milk, you get sick. I will do the smell test. I will pretend that I know what I'm doing. But to be honest, like all milk always kind of smells a little bit off. Fresh milk, I'm like, you can't smell anyway, can you? Exactly. So that's why I am far more on the Jason side of things. But I'll at least pretend. I'll be like, mm, do you drink no, it on the day? No, uh, is, what, if it's, what if it's the exact the day of the day is the last day I can use. It. So you can you if the date matches Quick, what your watch drink says. all the that's milk. A, that, <laughs> that's how I feel. If, if the date is what the watch says, finish the milk today because it's all going out tomorrow. <laughs> Judge Giamatti, I, I know that uh, I think I know the answer for you, but are you willing to push it on the milk? No, nah, I'm always playing it safe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My man. Cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, Foot Clan, check this out. We want to thank Chrysler Pacifica. Oh, yeah. I want to thank Chrysler Pacifica. I'm living that minivan life, and the Chrysler Pacifica is America's first and only hybrid minivan, and it's the only minivan in its class with stow-and-go seating and storage. The, the seats on the second and third row, they fold all the way under. Maximum storage. The hybrid is awesome. That's what's in my driveway right now. Got to save that gas. Dude, I hate going to the gas station. Yeah, I hate it. And I, I don't go very often. Thank you, Hybrid Pacifica. Uh, the the Uconnect his theater hostess, system. His hostess Apple Pie count is down. Uh, <laughs> so, look, I've been I've been waiting to do this Pacifica read for a while because the, 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 the van is amazing. And if you're a family and you're looking for a minivan, you can have what I have, the dual 10-inch touchscreen HD TVs. You can play movies. You can play video games. You can do all sorts of stuff. And they have this crazy 360 camera where you can literally... I don't, I don't know what wizardry they use, but you can see the car from the top. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. I, I don't know how they do it, but they are offering the Fantasy Footballers listeners an exclusive $1,000 bonus cash offer towards a new Chrysler Pacifica or Pacifica Hybrid. Visit PacificaFootballers.com. And then you sign up to receive this offer, updates, and more from Chrysler's brand. And now with Pacifica Family Pricing, your family is their family. Everybody can receive Chrysler's employee price plus the $1,000 bonus for being a fantasy footballers listener. Again, that's PacificaFootballers.com. All right, the Denver Broncos at 1-3 and three, taking on the New England Patriots, finally, who are 2-2. Two and two. Patriots, 10-point favorites, 45-point over-under. If Drew Locke had hoped to not have to face the Patriots or the Broncos had hoped not to have to not face Cam Newton, uh, kicking it back a week mm -hmm. ruined all of that for them. But uh, New England gets Cam Newton back. That will help the offense tremendously. You also have to wonder, based on what we had seen from Julian Edelman in the in the previous weeks, whether this week is necessary for him if he was dealing with injury. There's a lot to work through on the Patriots side, though, because you can be excited about Cam Newton returning, but it has implications on whether you can start a player like Damian Harris, who had a breakout game, or you know rely on you know people were starting Rex Burkhead too, and James White is back. It seems like this running back crew 
really takes a hit with Cam's return in terms of predictability. Yeah, it, it, we don't do pump the brakes anymore, but if we did, Damian Harris would have been my pump the brakes player. The Broncos are very stout against the run. They yes. are literally the, the fewest fantasy points given up to the running back position, and now Cam coming back vultures the touchdown opportunity on the goal line. I do love Cam, and I agree with you, Andy. I think the week of rest for Julian Edelman will be very good for him. Uh, so th this is this is a matchup where – um, I like Julian Edelman, I like Cam Newton, and that's about it from the Patriots side of the ball. If you need a little bit uh, more, the Broncos are number one against yes. opposing fantasy running backs on the year, only giving up 14 points a game. If you have to break that up among three or four running backs. Eesh. Yeah, and that includes the week one against Derrick Henry. So yeah. it's not like they just faced scrubs. Yep. And, for, and if you're looking at James White, I know he had eight targets the last time the Patriots played. That was a different team. That was against Kansas City. That was uh, not Cam Newton as the quarterback. Now, there there are some question marks on the other side of the ball with you know the Melvin Gordon situation. He was not practicing yesterday. I would project him to not play. Yeah, which means Philip Lindsay is at least an option for you. This is not a great matchup. The Patriots defense, obviously, very good against the run. 18 fancy points a game given up uh, on average over the course of the year. But, look, if you can get a running back that's going to have the primary opportunity, is that how you see Lindsey, or do you think it will be more of a Lindsey plus Freeman? I think Freeman will be involved. Lindsey, it, if, you if you're desperate for running back, then Philip Lindsey is – Interesting because he, he might still be on the waiver wire. I know that uh, people are looking after him after all the Melvin Gordon or looking for him after the Melvin Gordon news started breaking out. But I'm not I'm not like going to proclaim Philip Lindsay will be a running back two this week. Would you play him or would you play Devin Singletary? Oh, I would play gross. Lindsay. You would? I would. I okay. I, I think it'll be primarily uh, Lindsay. You know, you you've got a stout rush defense giving up 18 points. Uh, to to running backs a game, you know, if if he gets fifteen of those, I'm I'm happy. I'm thrilled if he gets fifteen. Right. I do have a little bit of breaking news, not enough to hit the button, but Darrington Evans uh, is on injured reserve now for the Tennessee for Titans. the Tennessee Titans, who was the kind of oh. potential well, backup we insurance were, policy. That's why we were seeing Jeremy McNichols. Yeah, yeah, I remember him. Draft Twitter loves Jeremy McNichols. Yeah, and uh, so we we shall see. Hey Brooks, has uh, Le'Veon Bell signed anywhere yet? Nope. Oh. All right. I see uh, Sean McDermott talking about they've looked into Le'Veon Bell with that uh, Bills situation. If I were the Bills, I would be looking at Le'Veon Bell too. They need some help there. Yeah. Yeah. Better situation. Like, Lev Bell, if you're prognosticating, is it better in Buffalo or is it better in, in Kansas City for it's, fantasy output? It's better in Kansas City. Okay. Agreed. I thought he might get a little bit more work in Buffalo than he would. He might get more groundwork, but then you deal with – you deal with Josh Allen taking away potentially taking your True. rushing touchdowns and you just he you don't will, have as many you, passes to the running back position as well. Exactly. All right, Jerry Judy, are you willing to start him this week against the Patriots? I am I'm willing now that Drew Locke is back, he's going to be the primary receiver. Um I I don't think we have any update on Stephon Gilmore to see if he would be back for this game. That would make a difference to me. Obviously, if Gilmore is there, he's going to be on Judy, and then I would really like to not play him. But if he's out, uh, the, the other corner is still great, um, but I would I would be willing to play him. However, if you're telling me in this matchup, Julian Edelman or Jerry Judy, I would rather play Edelman. Now, what about this? Noah Fant, the Broncos tight end, who looked like he was on his way to a full breakout season, he has returned to a limited uh, as a limited participant in practice. We don't know if that means he plays or not, but let's just – let's say Noah Fant plays. Does that affect your Jerry Judy situation at all? I, I currently have an expectation that he does play. He's in my okay. lineup in our league of record, and th so that's that does not affect my view of Jerry Judy. All right, Patriots have been pretty good against opposing fantasy tight ends, so he may be limited on the field even if he comes back. But – it's the tight end position, so you probably are right. taking your That's... shot at targets and not necessarily matchups. I think that you should try and trade for Noah Fant right now. Okay. Or especially after this week, because if he comes back and is a little bit limited on the field That's possible. and has a tough matchup, then might come cheap. All right. The Washington football team, as they are so titled, takes on the New York Giants. 
Washington is 1-4. and four. The Giants are 0-5. What a delight. Uh, the Giants <laughs> are two-and-a-half-point favorites. It's a 43-point over-under. This will be an epic showdown of quarterback ineptitude, most likely. Daniel Fumble Jones, Kyle Allen. Mike said it at the top. The defenses are the highlight reel of this game, most likely. You can't really trust. You certainly can't trust either quarterback in terms of fantasy football. Antonio Gibson, I think, will have the opportunities to make an impact against the Giants. Giants are in the bottom third in terms of uh, giving up points to opposing running backs. Devonta Freeman had a nice week last week. It's a tough defensive front to run against. When you play Freeman, here's what you are rooting for. And it is not very different than the David Montgomery. You are rooting for pass-catching opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, also known as Daniel Jones chooses not to fumble on this play and as an emergency throws the ball to his running back. Mm -hmm. And you are hoping for somebody to get dragged down on the three-yard line. Yep. And so touchdowns and, and receptions. You're not looking for Devonta Freeman to sustain your fantasy lineup between the tackles. Do I think he can get it done this week? I think we have him ranked perfectly. The RB28 on the week. If you need him, okay. Like Devonta Freeman or Philip Lindsay in the previous game? Oh, that's take, a great question. I'd go Freeman. I would as well. Yeah, me too. So he has looked better than I thought he'd look out on the field. He does not look completely washed. He looks like he can contribute in the passing game. But it's, for, for now, it's Devonta Freeman yeah. on the Giants. So. Darius Slayton had the taking it to 100 last week, Jason. Does he take it to 100 again in this matchup? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, Darius Slayton is is a quality wide receiver. I would like to roster Darius Slayton. I think he's going to have plenty more big games. So far on the season, the Washington football team's been pretty stout against wide receivers. Um, you know, that that's not always, you know, uh, because of them locking down a wide receiver, they they give it up to tight ends. So right. you, you go uh, other ways. Hopefully Evan Ingram can have his game that fantasy managers have been waiting for the entire season. This appears to be a great matchup for him. But uh, Darius Slayton, Golden Tate, I think in a pinch you could use either. And I like better options uh, almost – you know, across the board, like I, th there's just so many options out there. I would rather play than these two guys. All right. Terry McLaurin is living the life that I was afraid he'd live, which is basically super talented, big time weeks. And yet he keeps ping ponging between not having a good week and having a great week. So right. based on the very statistically viable back and forth strategy projections, he's, he's back. He's due for a good game after last week's. Uh, three for 26 performance. Yeah. Which but, you can kind of throw out because of the quarterback change, but. Yeah, you got to throw that. Throw out last week, but this week he will it's have. tough. He will see the coverage from James Bradbury like we talked about earlier in the week. And Brad, Bradbury has been great. Yeah, I mean, ask Amari Cooper uh, about James Bradbury. Uh, so it's Terry McLaurin is a – a wide receiver three, maybe a flex. He might be someone you even consider benching altogether this week. Okay. Evan Ingram, I do think that uh, in the tight end landscape, he is somebody <laughs> that you can play. Yep. So we will uh, we'll talk about him later. Baltimore, Philadelphia. Baltimore is four and one. They are seven and a half point road favorites in this one, making it. Uh, this is Baltimore taking on the Philadelphia Eagles, who are one, three and one. And uh, do I'm, I'm a glutton for punishment. Andy's almost upset of the week. Why do you hate the Ravens? I don't hate the Ravens. This is the second time you've picked a terrible team to beat. <laughs> that is true. Uh, was it the uh, the Houston matchup? Yeah, the Texans. Philadelphia is finding a way to stay competitive in almost all of their games. And they're yeah. at home. They they're one three and one. They they're were the on, division leader, right? They were on the cusp. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they had an opportunity to beat Pittsburgh last week. I wanted to bring up. I think the Giants at zero and four are a game and a half out. This is NFL. We need to take care of this situation. What is happening in the NFC East is not fair. You want to talk about competitive balance of of things going around the league? How many fans do we let? We want to make sure there's everyone is on an equal playing ground. Fix the NFC East. This is this should not be allowed. Look, if he extended the overtime period, maybe they're two and three instead of one, three and one, Mike. 
right on the edge of 500. Maybe they're Is that good enough for a division lead, 500? No. Yeah. <laughs> Under 500 <laughs> is not good enough. They have been staying competitive. That's all I'm saying. They uh they're 10th in the league against opposing fantasy uh quarterbacks, they're 11th against opposing fantasy running backs. Things have not looked smooth for Baltimore on offense thus far this year and uh they took the Steelers to the wire last week. Being seven and a half point home dogs seems excessive to me. So, and maybe I, you know, maybe I'm a big Travis Fulgham fan. Maybe, maybe the Fulgham breakout is a real thing. What do you guys think in this one? It, it, it could be. I went back and I watched every single reception of his last week. He was getting open on some plays, and on some plays, he was just making really difficult catches in traffic. He looked fully legit. Uh, Fulgham. I, Fully legit. Legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was there. No, but then, no. I've it's, been looking for a Fulgham pun of some sort for a while, and I have not found it. No. So, Foot Clan. Help. 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 <laughs> um, yeah, no, he, he did. He looked good. He looked better to me than Greg Ward has looked when thrust into that role. Uh, but it's a very, very small sample size. I mean, we've got a, a game and a half here of Fulgham relevance. The nice thing is, even though this matchup is terrible for him, so was last week's breakout. Yeah, I mean, they get, they're going to have to throw the football if they're seven and a half point home underdogs and Baltimore's got a lead, or at least that's how Vegas sees it. Confidence level, though, with Miles Sanders in this matchup against the tough, tough Ravens defensive front, it's the same as last week. Same as last yeah. week. It's irrelevant. Your yeah. confidence level is irrelevant. He's in your lineup. That's and a good way to put it. You just go. <laughs> now, Mike, if you look up at the matchup screen on uh -huh. our back wall, there's a player. What? There's a player up there. They got Mark Andrews on one side, and then you've got a superstar on the other side, Mike. Do you want to have a conversation about this this uh, young man? His so name's up, Zachary. Up on our match preview, we have Mark Andrews, yeah. great tight end, superstar tight end, and then uh, someone who is I, – I can say this. He is really clean. He smells good because he is washed. Oh, oh. right. Mike is 86 and number 86. I'm out. I'm out. Austin yes, Hooper a, is in my lineup, baby. Is this a new new rule, 86? Yes. <laughs> oh man. If he's in the lineup, he's out of your fantasy lineup. I don't I don't know what's going on, Mr. Ertz, but I don't like it. Zach Ertz to uh be resuscitated in this game or Evan Ingram, Mike. Evan Ingram. Jason, I, do you have I mean, Mike has stolen the show in terms of strong takes about Zach Ertz <laughs> being washed. And very clean and smelling wonderfully. Yeah, that look. That's what I. He smells it's a, great. It's a perk. He smells um, great. But Jason, I, I don't know what you believe. You said you thought about trading for him, but then you didn't because you you said to yourself, "Well, maybe he is washed." <laughs> I I respect Mike's opinion, and I I know what happens unconsciously, accidentally, or on purpose when we are rostering a player and watching very closely. I know Mike is watching all of these routes and seeing if it's. You know, he'll he'll scream at the quarterback when his guy's open every single time, like, yes. throw him the ball! Yes. Uh, but he's screaming at the player not getting open. So I, 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 I tend to, like, my normal analysis, when I look at the opportunity, the age, the history, I'm not off of Zach Ertz. This matchup, look, the Ravens are top 10 against quarterback, against running back, against wide receiver. You want to know where you beat the Ravens? At tight end. They're middle of the pack. This is a, this is a Zach Ertz game. They need him. And my analysis would usually be, I would I would start Zach Ertz over Evan Ingram, but I trust a little bit of Mike's gut here. He's, I mean, he, look, he he does this for a living. I don't know if if we know that, but uh, he he's uh, I've he's, never paid him, so I I am hesitant <laughs> with Zach Ertz. Uh, Mike has stolen the show with the Ertz hate, but for for maybe just cause because I was. I was opposed, and then last week happened, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. He could just be flat out right, and I think this week will be the telling week. If if it happens this week, it's got to be D-U-N. Metrics wines, just to look at it, he's still out there for the same, you know, great portion of the snaps. His yards per catch, though, you know, after his entire career, he's been in the double digits. This year, it's at 7.2. Oh, so uh, even the good game, and I'm putting that in kind of quotes, from three weeks ago, it was like seven for 70. Like he, he, he's not going to make big plays. So if he doesn't get into the end zone, this is more of like a Witten hope. 
I'm based look, on the numbers. So I'm pulling up his uh, PFF grade. 42. 42 at the tight end position is the current. Is that out of 42? <laughs> no, there there's a couple guys behind him, but it, and even just his his receiving grade is it's bad. Who's man. at the top of the tight end list on the PFF grades? Oof. Gigantor. Is it really? <laughs> You're darn right yeah. it is because Gigantor is dominating. Give this man some opportunity. Well, uh, I Mo uh, Alley Cox from the when, Indianapolis Colts. When PFF does their grading though they ha they do have a size grade and so he <laughs> automatically gets a bump up because he's ginormous he took that to him hunter all right uh lamar jackson you're gonna play him hollywood uh, i think you you definitely yes, yes, should play him, him. Yes. He, he was my start of the week i i was between two guys uh he's not anymore but <laughs> okay. absolutely he he should be played this matchup and then uh but the running backs that's difficult right now I don't think yeah. you really want to play any of them. No, you do not. Would you rather start Mark Ingram or Devonta Freeman? Freeman. I, I am Freeman for sure. Ingram or Lindsey? That's certainly closer. I do think that the touched – like, I think the baseline is actually higher for Lindsey, but the probability of a touchdown is there for Ingram. Okay. All right, the Cleveland Browns at 4-1. and one, uh, Mark Andrews, play him. Uh, the Cleveland Browns at 4-1 and one, taking on the 4-0 and o Pittsburgh Steelers. This is an exciting game. I'm looking very, forward to this one. Very. The Steelers are three-point favorites. It's a 51-point over-under. Uh, you have a, a really a, a battle of disciplines here. Like the, the Browns are a fantastic, wonderful running football team with one of the most talented running backs in the game in Kareem Hunt, a pure workhorse, got so much opportunity and then you have this staunch running running defense for the Steelers. Something's got to give. Jason, do that voice for me again. Something's got to give. Perfect. Mike, play the guitar over it. <laughs> Something's got to give. So <laughs> what side do you uh, – I, I, can both sides win in this one because of Kareem Hunt's involvement in the passing game and – like Kareem Hunt, Kareem you're Hunt's not benching fine. him. No, you're not benching Kareem Hunt. Uh, Kareem Hunt is absolutely a good start. He's fine. It's not a great matchup, similar to what we were just talking about with Miles Sanders. There's no way that you bench Kareem Hunt. He I should have, be fine. I have more confidence, though, in Kareem Hunt and the blocking for the Cleveland Browns than I, than I had last week for Miles Sanders. Sure, because this is what they do, right? Yeah. Uh, however, Pittsburgh, 2.06 yards per carry allowed if you don't. And that's on the year if you take away that Miles Sanders run. Uh, but Kareem Hunt, he's just going to get a ton of work. Mm -hmm. James Conner, uh, the opportunities have been there, 18, 21, 18 the last three weeks. You're going to play James Conner. Mike, you like Big Ben in this game. I really like Big Ben, and I like the pass catchers for the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Put them in order. Oh, that's great. What a, what a great hosting Man. job. So <laughs> putting them in order – Great for me, hard for you. Uh, uh, it, Easy for me. Honestly, the it might be Juju at the top of the list. The Cleveland Browns have been absolutely eviscerated from the slot position, and that's that's Juju's role on this team. And Juju has not been getting it done for fantasy purposes, but I this is a, a scenario where I am playing him with full confidence. Be the, the ranking. Did he miss practice again this week? If, if I know they've does, been doing that, but I, like I I do wonder if. He's got something. Is he got something we don't know lingering? about? Lingering, possible. The other two guys, though, like Deontay and Claypool, it's difficult uh, to go with those guys because I don't know the status of Deontay Johnson. I don't know how healthy he actually is. But I'm saying my expectation for the Steelers' pass catchers and the the probability of multiple good games here. Let's say Deontay Johnson is out. If you're in a deep league. You want to start James Washington? I am absolutely for that. I th I think that that can work out. Uh, I believe he had the second most routes run last week. He did. Even, even you know, in he did. What we don't know is Claypool's is, world. Is after the Chase Claypool breakout, what is the dynamic? What is the what shifts for this offense? What seems difficult is I I totally buy like the recipe is there for a great game by the Steelers wide receiving core. Mm -hmm. Right, the Browns have struggled against opposing fantasy wide receivers. They give up almost forty fantasy points a game. But I'm not sure that anything that you said made me feel more comfortable comfortable about which one to play. That's fine. Because it's easy. You know, it's like Juju has been real bad. I mean, he's not had a game over 70 yards. He hasn't had a game over 50 yards in three weeks. 
It's easy for Jason, though, so I want to hear what he has to say. It's easy for me in the sense that you play all three. That's I If if I had Juju, he's in my lineup. Yes. If I've got Deontay Johnson, assuming yep. he's back at practice and active for the game, I mean, that's kind of a prerequisite. Which he's supposed to be. Yes, uh, he's in my lineup. And if I've got Chase Claypool in this matchup, based on last week and the matchup, he's, he's in my lineup. Now, the order... Assuming Deontay Johnson is healthy, I might put him at the top, then Juju, then Chase Claypool, but don't hear what I'm not saying. This is not an anti the ability to start Chase Claypool. The Browns have just been torched through the air. Their run defense has been great, uh, but through the air, whether it's tight end or wide receiver, wide receiver one, wide receiver two, they've just they've given up a lot of fantasy points to all yeah, of them. So the Cleveland Browns, uh, they were fine against wide receivers last week, but you know, hashtag Colts. But before week one, the twelfth most points to the wide receiver, ninth most, twelfth most, the most again in that Dallas Cowboy game. They and so I just I wanted to point out the Cleveland Browns ranking is not just because of the stat stuffing that happening happened against the Dallas Cowboys. They were hemorrhaging points those first three weeks before they got to that matchup. Well, and and maybe because of their rushing defense, but the, the Steelers give up a ton of points to opposing wide receivers too. And this is a game where they're going to have to throw the ball. It's a 51 point over under. I would take the over in this game. Beckham greater signed Fulgham and Fulgham blew this team up last week. Sure. So it does make, it makes the shootout possible in terms of Beckham's involvement, in terms of Landry. He showed some signs of life last week, even Kareem Hunt out of the backfield. You know, I don't know if I play Baker right. <laughs> on the road here, but we we got a little blurb here from our producer Owl Borland. Owl, the you're saying the Browns sent Beckham home today due to illness? Yeah, just hit that uh, head coach Stephen, Kevin Stefanski. He said that uh, <laughs> Stephen Kafanski, <laughs> Stephen yes, Kafanski, Stephen <laughs> Kafanski <laughs> uh, sent Odell Beckham Jr. home with an illness today. That's all okay. All right. Well, that's something to monitor. Although. Yep. Uh, Assuming it's not the illness, we'll, we right. sh should be okay with uh, a lead time here to Sunday. Agreed. All right. So, but Baker, uh, avoiding Baker, uh, he has just not yeah. been. Even his good games seem like they aren't good fantasy games. Uh, and they aren't necessarily great Baker games either. They are winning kind of in spite La of Baker last Mayfield. Week, last week, they won the game. And uh, Odell Beckham had a good game. And uh, Baker was overthrowing everybody. It was like I, I was I was um at the at the beginning of that game, I was actually listening to it on the radio I was driving and the announcers were asking asking and this is the Browns announcers were asking if Baker had too much coffee because he's just he's too energetic, too excited and airmailing everybody. Does uh, that look good? And he's got a rib issue. I mean Mike you brought this up earlier in the week. He he had X rays, mm -hmm. so a little bit of caution there. Um, anybody else on this game? Austin Hooper, Mike, you said you're playing yeah, over Zach Ertz. I, I will be. Uh, I hope that the, the nation will join me as we stand together united against Zach Ertz. And then just a quick note on uh, Dearness Johnson. Uh, no way. You can't play him. You yeah. Can't, you no. can't. I, I get the, the, the hopes and the dreams and the, the waiver priorities and the fab that were spent in me. I I have a, in our league of record. I ended up getting him, and that feels like burnt money now. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem. I mean, last game, the only reps he had was when clean up. Well, it was clean up because of a cramped Kareem Hunt right. when he came off the field. Right. Yeah. Uh, he he still looked good in those carries and had an important one to help seal the game win. But you can't play him because he wasn't involved. And this is a matchup where they're going to need. Hunt, this is difficult. I, you know, if if the following week and some easier matchups where you think maybe they'll split the load and give Cream Hunt a break, mm -hmm. maybe, but not this week. Starts of the week. All right, who wants to kick it off with our week six starts of the week? I will jump in here because you already know who it's going to be. My quarterback start of the week is Big Ben versus the Cleveland Brown three. Top 10 quarterbacks already given up by the Cleveland Browns. And the other two that were not, well, they were Dwayne Haskins and Phillip Rivers. I will not hold that against the Cleveland Browns. Or I, actually, I will not give that benefit to the Cleveland Browns. Big Ben is in play as a strong start. 
All right, I'm going to go with Matthew Stafford coming off the bye week. Jacksonville's given up three top ten finishes to the quarterback position in the past five weeks. And uh, the two they didn't give up, well, that was Baker and Wentz. So Stafford, I think he gets it going this week. Uh, they're 26th against the opposing fantasy quarterbacks. And we saw signs of life for Matthew Stafford um, against New Orleans. He had a number nine overall finish at the quarterback position. It's all set up for him coming off the bye here. Kenny G, mm -hmm. Matthew Stafford, let's go. Yep. Yeah, for me, it's Cam Newton. He, he had oh, a very yeah. bad game the last time you saw him. Then he misses a week, and you're starting to question, oh, was – is he good? Look, he's great for fantasy. He's seventh in points per game despite one bad week. And, you know, he was uh, – the the matchup against Denver is is not a scary matchup at all. And he's back from not an injury but from an asymptomatic COVID. So he's he's just reinstated, not just uh, right. trying to be recovered. He's good to go. I would start him. My running back, it's David Montgomery – I mean, really, it's whoever is playing against the Carolina Panthers, assuming it is not Kenyon Drake, because that is the only running back in the history of the NFL who cannot get it done against the Carolina Panthers. They are, <laughs> they are the matchup for fantasy running backs, and now they've lost their starting defensive tackle. I mean, they this, were that bad with their starter. This is it's David Montgomery week. Okay, all right, I will go with. The gas man, Miles yeah, Gaskin. The gas man. Uh, this is a matchup and opportunity play here. Taking on a Jets defense has given up a top 12 performance to opposing running backs four straight weeks. And yet they still have the same head coach. Still have the same head coach. Uh, Miles Gaskin was number eight last week. Got the goal line work. Uh, caught another five passes. This is just what he's doing now. Opportunity, a quarterback that's getting it done. They get to 500 this week. The Dolphins for life. Miles Gasman. You know that feeling when you get in the car and it's a full tank of gas. Mm. That's not the feeling of starting Miles Gasket, but he's at least it's half three of quarters. A You're going. <laughs> I can make it all the way to my destination. I might have to fill up right afterwards, but I can right. make it there. My light yeah. might come on, but the gas man. No, I I I, I like the Miles Gasket call. Um, for me, my start of the week this week is Ronald Jones. I I. Because he is, uh, look, he's he's been excellent in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. In the last two weeks, he's had uh, 217 yards, 37 carries, 14 targets. The involvement is there. And the Green Bay Packers defense on a per-game basis is the worst in the NFL at giving up fantasy points. They're, they are tied with Carolina. So even though their defense has been good and their team is winning the game, they are soft up the middle, and Tom Brady will exploit that. What happened to their the that first round defensive tackle they drafted to help the defense? Oh, they you know they traded him oh. plus other stuff so they could you know they fell in love, and they had to get their quarterback. <laughs> Very nice. My wide receiver start of the week. It's a triple whammy. It's whoever is whoever is playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I like them all. I yeah. I Andy was forced me to put them in order. And I would go Juju at the top, but if you spent the uh, the investment to pick up Claypool, you can start him this week. If Deontay Johnson is healthy, you can start him this week. I get that maybe you're a little hesitant after back-to-back -back injury games from Deontay Johnson, but the matchup is there. All three of these guys should have a good game. I did not know this is this is funny to me because I had no idea who your starts of the week were. I didn't I didn't right. look at this. And er and earlier the show, I was like, it's not hard to me. I'm starting all of the Pittsburgh yes. wide receivers. I had no idea that this was your start of the week. I like all it. of them. <laughs> I'm in, Mike. All right, I'm going to go Odell Beckham Jr. I know we just got the news that he was sent home with an illness. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the Pittsburgh secondary. It might just be a result of that running game being so good. They're bleeding points to opposing fantasy wide receivers, like yes. I said. Uh, they're 28th in terms of uh, fantasy points given up. It's a lot. And they gave up 45 last week to Travis Fogelman and company. And I mean, <laughs> if you were playing, you know, I played the Steelers defense. I was not expecting Philadelphia to be able to put up points and move the ball the way they did against the Steelers defense. They've given up top 12 numbers to opposing wide receivers three out of four weeks. So I think Beckham is, is set up for success, assuming he's back out on the field. And if not, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a pivot tomorrow. I like it. My wide receiver start of the week is A.J. Brown. He must be in your lineup. He destroyed Houston last year. In two games, he had 21 targets, 12 receptions, 238 yards, and two touchdowns. And both of those games were great. It wasn't 
this this isn't a weird average situation. Both over 100, right. both with a touchdown. And, you know, we, we talked about it. This is a matchup I like. I expect Houston to be able to keep up a little bit. And so, you know, even though he got off to a slow start and then missed games due to the Titans not being there, he showed this week he's he's a dominant player and should be in your lineup. My tight end start is TJ Hawkinson from the Detroit Lions, and he highlighted Matt Stafford, who I like a lot this week. They are fresh. They got a week of rest. They get to take on the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are not strong against fantasy tight ends. They're allowing 14 points per game to the position, and Hawkinson is actually – it, the tight end nine in points per game. Hockey Hockey-lees League. Hockey League. Yeah, so it's a Hockey League week. All right, I'm going to Evan Ingram. Washington's giving up a ton of points to opposing tight ends. They just got gashed by Gerald Everett last week with a big week. Uh, they're 30th in terms of fantasy points given up. Ingram just had his first top 10 week of the season. It's a little gimmicky. Not high volume this past week, but he's had some high volume target weeks. Had another touchdown called back in this game too. Had a couple rushing attempts. That's enough for me at the tight end position. I'm going Evan Ingram. Sure. <laughs> All right, my tight end start of the week might surprise you. I'm going deep, but I think you can start him this week. Darren Fells. If you are chasing a tight end off the waivers, you are chasing a touchdown. And if I had to bet outside of the Mark Andrews and Kelsey's, Darren Fells would be as high as any player out there that he falls into a touchdown sure. in this game. The uh, Titans are... Not great against tight end. They just haven't faced any of this year outside of week one when Noah Fant went five for 81 and a touchdown. I, I think uh, Darren Fells falls into the end zone. All right, those were our starts of the week. Jason, I hope you're ready. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. <sighs> it's a comfy cruise when you take a blanket on a ship. So I'm going back on vacation with Rodrigo Blankenship. <laughs> yeah. Give me them goggles. Like, look, is it Mike, a better? Was it home run? No, like, uh, Mike. I don't want to have to get rid of this segment. <laughs> oh man, look, here. Home here's run, the thing. grand slam. But I see what you're saying. And, and but he, here's the thing. Poetically speaking, what he did this week was infinitely better than the rocket ship. I mean, at least blanket <laughs> ship, blanket ship. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I know. Amazing. It, well, some of my best work. I agree. I, Mike, what's worse? What just happened? Or or Zach the Ertz? fact that he was excited oh. about it. Oh, I'm thrilled. I mean, this was he, his, yesterday. He was bubbling with excitement. His joy brings me joy. Yeah. And, yeah. And honestly, if if you heard someone you using that like in a freestyle, if there was a beat going on underneath that, it would be allowed. Oh yeah, it I mean, would definitely I, be allowed. I rhymed two words. <laughs> Well, it, look, you, you didn't really rhyme. You just went with similar right. vowel. Maybe sounds. the worse the rhyme, the worse the the better the points for these hey, that's, fantasy It's characters. worked so far. It has it's, worked I'm just going to start calling him Rodrigo Blanket Chip. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, that's not that's not funny. I believe he is the <laughs> the leading scorer in the NFL. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, goggles out. All right. Uh, oh, we want to oh, thank oh. Pristine Auction for Harambe. Uh, pristine auction uh, assigned Bengals logo football by Tyler Boyd, thirty two dollars. I think that was the highlight there, right, Brooks? Thirty two dollars yesterday. Wait for thirty two bucks for it? what? For assigned Tyler Boyd football, which I'm not sure. I if I went and got a football, no, oh, those are like thirty bucks. <laughs> those are like thirty dollars. <laughs> Two dollars for a Tyler Boyd signature. <laughs> but then, and actually, <laughs> if you use the code Ballers and sign up, get a ten dollar credit. That was a twenty two dollar ninety one cent That's signed football. Incredible. All right, pristineauction.com. Go check it out. That is it for today's show. Oh, we made it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready to settle in for a nice cruise with a yeah. comfy blanket. And guess what? Tomorrow, there's another show. Oh, man. See you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.